Hello, my name is Nathan, and welcome to this Blender tutorial on how to 3D print a sprite. So here's an example of what we will be creating by following this tutorial. So let's get started. Before we actually do anything in Blender, we're going to need an add-on that I created and an image to print. So if we go to the internet and go to github.com slash Mr. Sprite slash Pixelmaker, this is the add-on that I've created. I'll put the link to this in the description. So what this does is it takes an image, and if there's a pixel that has no transparency, then that pixel will be created as a cube in Blender, and we'll just do that for every single pixel. So don't use an image that is over 100 by 100 pixels, because that'll create 10,000 objects in Blender. We'll get really slow. So let's get the add-on. So click pixelmaker.py, click raw, and you can just right click and click save as to save the file. I already have it downloaded. And then to get an image, a really good place to get game sprites is the Spriters resource. So just Google for that, and I'll put a link for that in the description as well. I'm going to go use an NES sprite, and I'm going to use one from The Legend of Zelda. I'm going to 3D print Link. So here is Link's sprite sheet. You can just save the image, which I've already done. So now, before we can actually use this in Blender, we're going to have to crop it because it's a sprite sheet, and so we have to choose which one of these we want to use. So I just open this up in GIMP. You can also use Photoshop. So I'm just going to grab this one and crop it. So now Blender will only be using this part, so not the whole sprite sheet. So you can just overwrite your image, export it, and now we're ready for Blender. So in Blender, we're going to need to install my add-on. So go to File, User Preferences, and just click on the Add-ons tab, click Install from File. Navigate to wherever you downloaded the pixelmaker.py file and click install. So on the user categories, this is all the add-ons that a user has installed. Check the box on the pixelmaker add-on. Close the user preferences for now. So on the tool tab of the toolbar, you can see the pixel, pixel maker panel. So right here, it's asking us to navigate to an image. So right here is the image that I've exported. Just choose it and now we're almost ready. Join objects is an option that you need to check if you're going to 3D print because it'll join all of the interior faces that are touching, which will make it so it's 3D printable. Because if there's two faces there and then they're they're touching when they're joined, it'll have an in interior face, which is non-3D printable. It's called a non-manifold geometry. So before we run this, I'm just going to delete everything. So press A twice to select everything, press X and choose delete. Okay, we're ready to run it. So, just like that, a link has been created. No interior faces. Everything's been joined nicely. Nice materials. So, we're almost ready to send this to send this to a 3D printer, but there's a few more sizing things we have to do. So, I'm just going to rename this to link. If I could type. And I'm going to save my Blender file. So, I know from experience that about the minimum height, so this height that you can get for one of these is about three millimeters. So we're gonna have to scale this down. So on the scene tab, I'm gonna change this to metric, and then I'm going to get another add-on. In the user preferences, I'm gonna go clear this filter for the category and type 3D print. And right here, the 3D print toolbox add-on, check the box, and it is added a tab on the toolbar. So we're going to scale to bounds, and I'm going to type 5 centimeters. So if you zoom in, it's made it really small, but it's scaled it properly to 5 centimeters for the longest, which I believe is the vertical. So now it is scaled correctly, but let's make sure the height is correct. So press N to pull up the properties panel. We can see that it is 4 by 5 centimeters and then 3.15 millimeters tall. So this should be ready to go. So let's try exporting this to Shapeways. So choose X3D for the format for printing, which will preserve the colors so it can be printed in full color. And then let's leave the path. Let's not worry about that because it'll just 
export it to wherever our blend file is saved. And now you can press export. And up here it says it has exported our file. So now it is time to send this off to Shapeways. Okay, so now we're on shapeways.com. So let's just click this button right here to upload a new design and click upload again. So now it's time to select our file. So just choose the file. It'll have it'll be saved as the blend file name with a dash, then the object name that you've exported. .x3d. So click open. We set this in millimeters and upload. So now you can rename this. And right here it shows us a little 3D preview. All the colors are there, so that worked fine. And it is four centimeters by about five by 0.3. So the scale worked perfectly. So now we just scroll down to find the full color sandstone. So now it's just making sure that this is 3D printable. So I'm just gonna pause the recording until it tells us that it's okay. So after about two minutes, it has passed these checks for the wall thickness and dimensions and knows that it's able to be printed. So it's all ready to just be added to your cart and you can press check out once it prompts you to. So you can just check it out, order it, and have it come to your house. So if you don't want to use Shapeways, you can use your own 3D printer. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching.